and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm grateful to have the privilege of being able to impart to you all the truth that God has revealed to me and pray that in some fashion, in some way, that his word will find a lodging place in your heart, that you'll grow, that you'll know more about what God would have you to do, and that you won't take what God has done for you to yourself, but you will pass it on to someone else, for there is no secret what God can do, what he's done for us. He'll do the same for you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you now asking that you would have your way. We realize, dear God, that there's nothing that we can do without you. So come, Holy Spirit, come, Heavenly Dove, with all thy quickening power, kindle a flame of sacred love in these cold hearts of ours. Have us to realize, my Master, that only the things we do for Christ are going to last. Have us to touch men and women and boys and girls' lives with the truth of the influence that you've shared with us, realizing that soon and very soon we're going to see the King. Now, thank you, my Master. Thank you for leaving your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Hide the word in our heart that we may not sin against you. It's in the name of Jesus we ask this blessing. It's in the name of Jesus we pray for faith. To walk in victory. For when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the fourth chapter of the book of John, there's a million passages of scripture. I'd like to read just a portion of that, that 29th verse, fourth chapter of God's Gospel according to St. John, verse 29. Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this. This is a very familiar passage of scripture that's found in the fourth chapter of God's Gospel according to St. John. It's known by many Christians as the Samaritan woman. It, it is a very interesting passage of scripture because it reminds us of the fact that whenever we come to a relationship with God, we have to understand that He is the Creator, we are the creature. That every gift that's good and perfect comes from above. And we aren't worthy to receive those gifts, but God looks beyond our faults as apply our needs. He he opens our heart that we may receive from Him the gift of salvation. There's a song that reminds us of this special relationship that God has with those who will open their hearts to receive. It's how to reach the masses. Men of every birth for an answer. Jesus gave the key for if I, if I be lifted up above the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. You see, to, to come to Jesus, you don't come based on what you desire. You come based on what he desires. I like the way they say it in the contemporary church. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. The, the blessing of God is to know him in the free pardoning of his sins. Because as long as we live, 
and wrestle with the issues that perplex us in life that the scriptures declare all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life. God looks beyond our faults and supply our need. God doesn't expect us to carry our faults and our failures with us, but God tries them in the fire that we can grow and that someday we'll come forth as pure gold. Here in this, this text, the fourth chapter of God's Gospel according to St. John, we have what is known by many as the Samaritan woman. She gives a witness for the 21st century human being. This woman, this, this woman who is of ill repute, does not have the, the best reputation, comes to the well to draw water at an unusual hour because she doesn't want to encounter the other women. You know, sometimes there are other people who claim a special relationship with God who hold us in abeyance from growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This woman would not come to the well at a certain hour because she did not want to encounter anyone that would question her, her lifestyle. She comes to this well at this unusual hour and there's a man there. She said she can go to the well and he, he he would probably not say anything to her because the custom was that, that, that the men would not speak to an unaccompanied woman in public. But this man that she came to meet at this well was a very unusual man. He, he, he looked at her and he saw the potential that was in her and realized that if she would just reach out and touch, that he would make her whole. This woman comes to the well and she, she seeks to draw water and he raises a question. He tells her, give me water to drink. This, this woman is stunned. And this unaccompanied woman is, is shocked by this address of this man who realizes that, that, that she's unaccompanied, but, but he still makes the request of her. Give me something to drink. I like the way the woman, the woman says to Jesus, she said, I have nothing to draw with in the well. It's deep. She made excuse. Oftentimes, whenever God is attempting to move us from where we are to where God wants us to be, instead of responding honestly to the, the, the question or the, the inquiry that is, that is, that is the ask of us, we, we reach back and pull up some favorite cliche or some favorite saying that would allow the conversation to move but it would not move with the truth. But this woman, this woman contemplates in her heart. This woman considers in her mind. This woman understands nothing from nothing. Leaves nothing. Now, that's what I wanted to, to share with you all. It does not matter what someone thinks of you or someone says of you because that person will not be there the day or tomorrow when you get ready to make your next move. What matters is what God knows about you. 
Jesus ask this unnamed, unknown, unassociated woman to give him a drink of water. She uses the excuse, she said, the, 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 the well is deep and I have nothing to draw where Jesus said, if you knew who I was, if you knew who it was to ask of you a drink of water, then you would respond appropriately. Oftentimes, we don't know who people are. Oftentimes, we run into people and instead of giving them a direct soul res response to, to the question they ask. We, we tried to come up with some cliche or, or some heady way of, of trying to address what they're saying. And, 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 and in some instances, the only thing they want to know is are you willing to grow? Are you willing to, to reach where you are to, to where God wants you to be. There's a song I'm reminded, of, I'm reminded of. It says, Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. You, you have to realize that, that you're in God's hands. It doesn't matter what people say and what people do. God will take care of you. Songwriter reminds us, be not dismayed whatever. Be tired. God will take care of you. Beneath his wing of love abide. God will take. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lay down that we reward upon my breast. God will take care of you. Every day that you live, every moment that you have life in your body, you realize that I'm a child of the king. And being a child of the king, I should give that that the king requires to the service of, of all humanity. This woman contemplates, she considers what will happen if she, she tells them the truth and she, she, she puts everything out of her way and she tells them the truth. She said, I have nothing to draw with and the well is the God has brought us from a mighty long way. He's been better to us than we have been to ourselves and we have been to others. God has looked beyond our faults and supplied our needs all for the opportunity to be an instrument in his hands. See, it doesn't Take God a whole lot to, to save us. But the condition of salvation is that you reach, you reach and tell somebody else that God is in the way making business. That there is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do the same for you. God wants to grow us up, to make us more of who God wants us to be so that God can use us to reach somebody else. That's awesome how to reach the masses, men of every birth for an answer. Jesus gave the key. If I, if I be lifted up above the earth, 
I'll draw all men unto me. That's his purpose in coming to, to, to bring those who are lost into a relationship with him. To let men, women, women. It doesn't matter where you've been and what you've been through. Turn it over to Jesus. And he'll work it. He'll work it out. This one is interesting now. But Jesus has, has piqued her curiosity, has, has, has looked beyond her, her faults and supplied her needs. He, he tells her, he says, where's your husband? This woman realizes that only the truth matters. She said, I have none. He said, you answered well. Actually, you had five. Jesus doesn't spend a whole lot of time there because that's not the place that Jesus is interested in. See, we are interested in a lot of things about a lot of people. And we can't help ourselves. But when you have the interests of God to, to, to uh, motivate you along life's journey, then you don't worry about the insignificant and unimportant and irrelevant issues of life. Because here's, here's the truth of the matter. All of us are God's children. And every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. When you can look beyond somebody's faults and understand their needs. You, when you can help them to realize that, that God is in, the, is in the cleaning business. I know that I can, I can tell by the people that I come in contact with on a daily basis what God has had to do to, to bring them out, to bring them through. But the truth of the matter is, in order for God to bless you, you have to be willing to take it to Jesus and he'll work it out. This woman tells Jesus about her situation, not realizing that she's getting better by the minute. And Jesus ministers to her. She, 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 she doesn't wish to, to keep what he has done to herself. That's an important issue. Many of us talk about our salvation, but we don't want to share God has done in our lives with somebody else. But that's what God makes of us. He makes us into living witnesses. And like this woman, when God has touched our life, when God has brought us out, when God has made a way out of no way for us, when God has been our bridge over troubled water, we can't help but to say, come see a man. see somebody that supplies your your every knee shackled by a heavy burden need the load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touch me and now I am no longer the same he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that fills my soul. Something happened. And now I know that he touched me and made me. God, look beyond my thoughts to blind my needs. When, when, when the world said you were nobody, God said you were somebody. You're my child. 
and he calls us to come unto him. All ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am weak. One thing when God does something for you. We have the tendency to, to want to sit on it, but when God does something so miraculous in our lives, we He said we weren't going to tell nobody, but we couldn't keep it to ourselves. Tell somebody what God has done for you. Let, let somebody know that God, that, that he, he looked beyond your faults and supplied your need. Let somebody know that God will take Nothing and make it into something. Let somebody know. That they need him every day and they need him every hour. And some glad morning, when this life is over, I fly away and be at rest. I know that the older we get, the the more we we feel we lose time. You know, we don't keep up with time the same way. Memory, we our memory isn't like it used to be. Thoughts aren't as sharp as they used to be. But all that is you're getting ready. You're getting ready to to be with God because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord in some glad morning when this life is over. I fly away. But until that day, put your hand in God's hand. Share with somebody, what God has done in your life. Let them know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? This text is the Samaritan woman, but this text speaks to each and every one of us. When we're down, he picked us up. We could not see our way. He made a way. Never forget. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily. Give. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to him. I surrender. I surrender all. May God bless you. God keep you. That was my prayers. Mm -hmm.